Oh my gala, isn't it so beautiful? Look, look, the introduction to Python self-study program is now online. We already have 54 participants since last night. It is free. So if you want to come and get 48 sessions on how to do Python, it's right for, there for you at silicondojo.com. That was a project that had no end. It kept going on and on, my friend. It just started going because I didn't know what it was. And it kept on going because, because, because it was a project that had no end. So anyways, that is now up. It officially got published yesterday. So I'm, I'm a happy boy. So now, now I can breathe a sigh of relief. And you know what I can do Monday? I, I can start the self-study program on Bottle. And then you know what I'm going to do after I finish that? I'm going to do one for SQLite. And then after that, I'm going to do one for JavaScript. And then after that, I'm going to do one for AI. And then after that, I'm going to do another one for AI. And then after that, I'm going to do another one for AI. Anyways, because that's how the grind works. Do you know what the grind is? A grind. <laughs> Again, it's not, it's not what you are willing to do once or twice or five times or 20 times. It is what are you willing to do infinitum. So anyways, we'll see. We'll see how far I can go with this. But I'm pretty, pretty excited. Again, it's up there. I think it's a pretty good program. The format, the format's nice now. So you can go through. You can take the exact lessons that you want. Uh, you get the video. So there's a video that goes with it. There's the class notes below it. It's all there as one coherent product. So I think that's good for Silicon Dojo. But we shall see. We shall see how it goes. So anyways, today's topic is, oh my golly, oh my golly, oh my golly. They have come out with an $120 version of the Raspberry Pi. And surprise, 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 in the modern world, uh, people are crying. People are going, but, but Raspberry Pis aren't supposed to be that expensive. So I want to talk about that a little bit because I think it's like kind of inter it's interesting from a, a technical standpoint. And then again, it is one of those things that if you're thinking about going either with a Raspberry Pi or with a NUC or something like that, there are things to consider. These are different products because that's what some people are screaming about now. They're like, well, well, if a Raspberry Pi is $120, why don't I just spend $130 on a NUC? And it's like, well, the NUC solves your problems. You do, you do realize this is a different product. This is a different product that solves different problems than the NUC, right? If you get that, fine. But I do hope you understand. Because I think that's one of the confusing, that's one of like the frustrating things in the modern world with, uh, with so many people wanting to be into computers. They like want to be into computers, but they don't really want to understand computers. It kind of reminds me way back in the day, right? So, uh, so back when I had started my... Uh, uh, my little consulting company, <laughs> fallen into my consulting company, basically. Anyways, I had this little apartment downtown, uh, and then I had a friend. I had a friend down the hall, uh, and he was like a salesperson or whatever. And then one day, we were, we were talking. We were talking. He's like, yeah, man, yeah, I really, I really want to get into technology. And I was like, oh, really? That's kind of surprising. Again, because they're really good with sales. They're really good with people. Didn't really strike me as a technology professional. Yeah, but oh, whatever, right? But anyways, he was like, yeah, well, isn't it obvious with how I decorate my house, my apartment? And then I look around and, you know, there's like Transformers or Gundam or mechs or anime, that kind of stuff. And I'm looking around, looking for the tech. I'm looking for the tech. I'm like, no, I don't, I don't see you uh, see any tech in this apartment at all. He's like, what? That whole bookshelf's full of it. I was like, well, the whole bookshelf's full of toys. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're nice toys. Don't get me wrong, but, you know, Gundam's not real. <laughs> but anyways, I find that one to be interesting. Thing. Like, when you talk about, like, technology with so many people, is there like, yeah, I'm into technology. Like, yeah, but are you? But are you? Do, do, do you actually understand what's going on? Uh, or do you have a shelf of toys? When you when you look at your shelf, are you looking at relays and Arduinos and, and uh, breadboards and stuff like that? Um, or are you looking at transformers? One of these things is technology. 
the other is a toy. So anyways, that's one of the things I find interesting when people lose their mind, especially with things like raspberry pies, is as a field, they don't really understand what the hell they're talking about. It's not, this, this is not the same thing as a NUC. If you don't know what the hell a NUC is, it's called a Next Unit Computer. Uh, it was originally created by Intel, got sold off to Geekom, uh, and basically they're the small computers. Uh, I, have an, I have an ASUS one that runs my, uh, my robot over there. Uh, basically, they're small, small form factor computers, uh, but they've got everything in there. They've got a real processor in there, they've got a real graphics card in there, they've got a real RAM in there, uh, they've got an NVMe drive uh, storage uh, normally. So they're full computers, they just happen to be small. And so some of the ones that are expensive, like the one that runs my robot, runs about seventy hundred bucks. Uh, but you can get versions um, that are, again, only about $130. So the nice part there is you can have, you know, quite a bit of RAM in it. Um, you can have, you know, an adequate processor, something along the lines of Celeron, whatever Celeron is nowadays. Um, you can put storage in there, so you could have four terabytes of storage in it if you really wanted to. Uh, so and then the good part is with that is essentially you get a really inexpensive, uh, system, an x86 system, to do with as you want. So if you want to build a server, you could do that with a NUC. Again, a little power server, but a server, right? Again, all kinds of little IoT things you could do with one of these NUCs, uh, caching servers, services, that type of deal. Uh, but they are, but they are, they're x86 computers uh, with, uh, with USB to drives or USB ports and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and the thing to be thinking about with that is that's just simply not this. This is something else, right? And so anyway, so now, uh, so Raspberry Pi, they've been going along for years. They've had all these different versions for years. So they had their Raspberry Pi 4B that was out for a number of years. Uh, that started like $55. Uh, they came out with the Raspberry Pi 5 back when COVID started. It was just not in stock or anything. Or no, the 4 wasn't in stock. I guess the 5 just came out. The 5 came out uh, and basically uh, with the 5, it's more powerful than the 4. And it had maxed out at 8 gigs of RAM. And the 8 gigs of RAM version of something like uh, $80 or something like that for an 8 gig of RAM version. Uh, and so now they've come out with a 16 gig of RAM version for about $120. And so that is what people are now looking at. Again, the whole idea is at the price point, the Raspberry Pis are getting too high. Well, the first thing you need to think about is if you know what a Raspberry Pi is, if you know what a Raspberry Pi is, and your question is, should I buy a 16 gig uh, Raspberry Pi for $120? Uh, the question is, is do you need the RAM? Do you need the RAM? If you're gonna be running desktop, if you're gonna be running desktop, if you're gonna be running Chrome with like more than two tabs open, six gigs of RAM might actually matter for you. So like desktop, like a desktop operating system, this actually requires real resources to run uh, that burns up RAM. The other, but the thing to be thinking about is if you're not necessarily running a desktop, or even if you have a desktop on it, but you're not running it as a desktop, you probably don't need that much RAM unless you're doing things like AI functionality, right? If you're doing processing, um, oh, LLMs, that type of thing, they, they may take more RAM. Uh, but for most things that you're going to be doing with IoT devices, four gigs is most likely going to be more than enough. 8 gigs is going to be completely fine, and 16 gigs is going to be overkill. Why you do need to think about over-provisioning for RAM, though, especially with a Raspberry Pi, is you got to remember the default storage is an SS, a, a, a micro SD card. So there's something called a swap file. So basically, if you look at the computer and how the computer's running, uh, the only data, the only data the CPU can actually directly touch, directly interact with, is whatever is in RAM. Right. So basically, when you load a uh, an application, when you load, when you start interacting with a file, what happens is that the files for that application or that file get basically pulled from the from the storage into RAM, and then the CPU is then able to interact with it. And then when you hit save or whatever, it gets saved from RAM back into storage. That's why you get some quirks and you'll get some corruptions every once in a while, basically with that with that process. So the issue is, is what happens if you run out of RAM? What happens if the CPU needs so much RAM, you run out of RAM? Well, the idea is they don't want your system to crash. Theoretically, they don't want your system to crash. And so there's something called a swap file on your storage. And so what the swap file is, is basically it's, it's a, an amount of uh, space on your storage device that's used for swapping whatever's in RAM. 
right? So the CPU is currently using this stuff. It's able to kind of cache the stuff it's not using into the swap file. And then as it needs it, it pulls that from the swap file into RAM, puts something else back into storage. And so that's the idea. That's what's called a swap file. So it can be swapped back and forth very quickly quickly between RAM and your uh, your storage. Uh, the issue is, is even when you have a platter drive, swap files are slow as hell. And on a, uh, and a Raspberry Pi, this is your storage, right? Unless you get the NVMe or whatever, this is your storage. So your swap file is literally now sitting on a micro SD card, which is just gonna suck if you actually have to, if, if you use more RAM than the, you actually have on your system, you start using a swap file, it is going to tremendously slow things down. And depending on what's going on, it may actually lock up your system just because it's a bad deal. So anyways, that's one of the things to be thinking about with if you know what a Raspberry Pi is, if you know why you're going to be using a Raspberry Pi, the question you have to ask yourself is, are you going to be getting anywhere close to actually using the maximum amount of RAM in your Raspberry Pi on your project? Uh, if you're not, 16 gigs isn't really going to do anything for you. If you are, then that's where you might want to think about uh, upgrading. Again, one of the things to be thinking about too, again, with things like Raspberry Pis, is that these may be going into field, into the field for IoT devices. Uh, you're most likely not going to want to have to touch them ever again. You want to deploy, fire, and forget these damn things. And so one of the things to be thinking about too with RAM is, you know, you put a product in the field now that may not need an amount of RAM, but what's the likelihood in a year or two that there will be an update where you might actually need more RAM. Uh, so let's say you put out some kind of surveillance cameras. So let's say you're using, you're using your Raspberry Pi as some kind of intelligence video system. And so right now, all you're, all you're doing is you're detecting license plate numbers and maybe counting cars, right? So you probably don't need a lot of RAM for that. Uh, maybe four, maybe four, probably eight. But anyways, right, you don't need 16 gigs of RAM uh, to do OpenCV to detect uh, license plate numbers and to count the number of cars. But here's the thing. Once you deploy that in the field, once these things have up, are already put up, once you have that, that, that sunk cost of installation and everything, wouldn't it be nice if in a year or two you could upgrade the code that's running on these things to start doing other things? Uh, demographic analysis, facial recognition. Again, you've, you've already got intelligent cameras in the field. Basically, if they have enough hardware on them, if you just update the software, they can start providing a lot more functionality. And so that's one thing that you may consider where it's like, well, you know, uh, an eight gig version costs uh, $80, a, uh, a 16 gig version costs $120. Guess what? We'll just build a client $100 more. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're getting the new deluxe smart camera system. Only $100 more. Wait wait a minute, Eli, but but I, but I thought you said it was only $40 more for the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. And it's like, well, yeah, but you got to get profit. <laughs> I mean, there, there's your cost and then there's the profit for selling it to the customer, right? So anyways, that's one of those things to kind of consider. And so those are some of the things to consider with if you already know what a Raspberry Pi is and what you're doing with it is essentially you want to go nowhere near that damn swap file unless you have to. Um, and so again, for desktop applications or whatever else, if you're using that amount of RAM, you might want a 16 gig. Or again, for kind of for that future proofing, I do believe we're getting to a world, especially with a lot of these IoT devices, where this stuff can just go into the field and just be there forever. Again, if, if you deploy a fully functional IoT device now, there's no reason to believe it can't still be functional in a decade. And so one of the things you should be thinking for yourself as you know a technician or whatever else, is if this thing is still in the field in a decade, don't you want to be value adding to it, right? Why, why simply push out crappy little, you know, bind updates or something like that when you can actually be pushing out new feature sets and get money on the customer? Hey, you know how you bought those camera devices from us for 400 bucks a piece, uh, you know, two years ago? Well, great. We now have the update that also does X, Y, or Z only costs you another hundred dollars per device. Two years after that, hey, guess what? We have this new Uber package. Only costs you $150 
per device. Right? And that's how you can keep mining money on the customers that you already have, which is something that you need to consider. So then the next question comes up. Right? Okay, so you don't really know what a Raspberry Pi is. You just got a whole bunch of transformers. When somebody, when somebody looks at your shelf, you got transformers. And as, as a transformer aficionado, you find it ridiculous that anybody would spend $120 on a Raspberry Pi. Well, just buy a real computer instead. The thing that you got to understand there is, again, is the feature set and basically the hardware capabilities of the Raspberry Pi. So you'll notice uh, the Raspberry Pi, I've got this. Uh, this is called an I2C LCD screen. Uh, so this is basically a screen. I can use this uh, for the Raspberry Pi to basically put output. Instead of having to have a 4K HDMI screen on this thing, this thing can actually tell me whatever the hell is going on in the system. And I get that from the GPIO pins. So with these GPIO pins, you can do outputs. Uh, so this was actually connected for an LED. So when it was processing, an LED would turn on. So I know it was processing. Uh, you can connect something like uh, an LCD screen. You can connect all kinds of different displays. You can connect GPS. Uh, so again, imagine an IoT device. So you're taking pictures. You want to get a GPS signal. You can connect a GPS thing to this. You can connect accelerometers to this. You can connect all kinds of different sensors and devices to this uh, to add to the capabilities of whatever your little Python script is running. All right. Um, so uh, beyond that, again, there's sensors and there's inputs and there's outputs and all those kinds of things. Uh, beyond that is it requires very little power. So uh, so if you buy this thing, you're supposed to get the 35 watt power supply. So there's a 35 watt power supply. And if you want, want all the functionality of this thing to work perfectly, get by the 35 watt power supply. The interesting thing is you don't actually need a 35 watt power supply. Uh, the 18 watt, I do believe it's an 18 watt, the 18 watt power supply will actually make this thing run depending on how hard you're trying to push it, right? And so one of the things to think about is that this requires a hell of a lot less power than a NUC. So most of the NUCs out there are gonna require more power than this. So if you're gonna put an IoT device out in the world uh, that's gonna be running off of solar, do you want a NUC or do you want one of these things, right? Again, if you want uh, GPI opens, inputs and outputs and that type of thing, NUC is just simply not going to give you that functionality. And so the reality is that this is simply a different type of device than that NUC is. It's just like with the Arduino, right? People argue about whether, whether you, should you use a Raspberry Pi or should you use an Arduino? Well, the first thing to realize is these are two entirely different things. This is a microprocessor and this is a computer or micro, I'm sorry, this is a microcontroller. This is a microcontroller and this is a computer. They're two different things. Do they have GPIO pins? Yes. Do they take power? Yes. Do you program for them? Yes. Does that mean they're the same thing? Fuck no. Two entirely different things. This is to this as, th as this is to the NUC. And so that's one of the things you have to consider when you're thinking about, again, whether you're going to go with a Raspberry Pi or a NUC or that type of deal. So anyways, that's, uh, that's some things to ponder out there. Uh, I've heard for like the AI functionality. So the Raspberry Pi has an AI hat. So again, if you're going to be doing AI stuff on the Raspberry Pi, you probably want uh, more RAM. Again, the LLMs really like to have more RAM. Uh, if you're going to be uh, doing any, like if you're doing a kiosk, so let's say you're doing a kiosk, it's going to have a lot of multimedia stuff going on that's very RAM heavy. Uh, you might you might want to uh, to go with the 16 gig there, um, but you're just going to have, kind of have to, to ponder on that. So there you go. Should you buy a 120 Raspberry Pi? And my answer, shockingly, is, well, it depends upon your problem. <laughs> if it solves your problem, you should. If it doesn't solve your problem, you shouldn't. Do you know what your problem is? <laughs> Do you know what your problem is? So anyways, there you go. Ooh, it started snowing. So apparently we might get anywhere between two to nine inches of snow today. So this, this could be interesting. Getting nine inches of snow a few months after a biblical flood. I wonder how that's going to go. <laughs> oh, golly. Anyway, that's all I've got to say. If you're interested in, again, the self-study program, I've got the introduction to Python series. Got all that other kind of stuff. And with that, see y'all later.